You guys ready for the word? All right, praise the Lord. I'm excited. God's got a word for you tonight. Let's pray together. Father, we're so grateful to give. God, what a blessing. What an honor. What a privilege, Lord. Not that we're giving you anything that you need, God. You have everything. You created everything. Of your own, we're giving back to you. But Lord, we know that it blesses your heart when your children walk in obedience. And so, Father, we give to build the kingdom of God. We give because we love you. We give in obedience. But also, Lord, we do remind you of your word, that you said you would open up the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing on us, so much so that we can't contain it. You would rebuke the devourer on our behalf. You said that you would supply all of our need according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. So, Father, I pray for the needs of the house. I pray for the needs of the people, God, that you would bless them, protect them, move them forward financially, Lord God, and in every area of their life, beyond finances, God, Bless their homes, bless their families, bless their futures and their dreams and vision and destiny, God. And we thank you, Lord. God, tonight, as we prepare our hearts to receive the word, we pray that you would open us up to receive. God, may we have spiritual eyes that see, spiritual ears that hear, spiritual hearts that are good ground that the word is sown into and it produces fruit in each and every one of our individual lives. We thank you, Lord, tonight we receive the word with meekness and we receive it by your spirit, the true teacher of the church, not a man, not a woman, not the young or the old, not the black, white, brown, any other color we could imagine. Tonight, God, we came to hear from you. Welcome, Holy Spirit. Lead us, guide us, guard us, direct us, motivate us to be all that you've called us to be and to do all that you've called us to do. And Father, bless all the churches. God, not just the Rock Church and World Outreach Center. We thank you for your blessing upon us. We thank you for your spirit teaching us and leading us. But God, for our brothers and sisters and for the body of Christ, just like we prayed and, and, and talked about Daniel 6.10, God, I pray, Lord, that as the churches continue to do what it is you've called them to do, Lord, as was their custom since the early days, God, that your blessing would be upon them and that you carry your church through every trial, through every uh, tribulation on the earth. God, I thank you, Lord, for faithful people preaching a gospel of Jesus Christ. Bless them, Lord, just as you would bless us. And Father, we lift up to you the persecuted church. Watch over them, strengthen them, encourage them, deliver them, Lord. It's in Jesus' mighty name we're all in agreement. We say amen, amen. amen. All right, today, get your Bibles and go with me to Romans chapter number one. While you're turning there, the title of tonight's message is The Power of Living by Faith. As I do, I often read from the Old Testament in the mornings and New Testament in the evenings just in my own personal studies. I've been doing this since I first got saved at 15 years old. I'm now 40 years old, and so I've just been going through the Bible. And it's amazing to me how as we read the scriptures, God will bring different things out in different seasons of life. And I've decided, you know, that I don't want to just get uh, just one translation. I've been reading one translation for a long time. I've been trying to read other translations. And something popped out to me the other night as I was reading through different translations of the, a verse that's been very familiar. Maybe it's very familiar to you as well. You could probably quote it with me as we read the scriptures. But I want to read this to you from Romans chapter number 1. And we're going to be in verse number 16 and verse number 17. I want to read this to you in the Passion Translation. Now, the Passion Translation is one of those modern translations. They, they lean heavily on the Aramaic, all right? Uh, But I find as I study this out and look at it that they're pretty faithful, pretty true to a lot of the other older translations. But I really like the way that it said this. In Romans chapter 1, we're going to start reading in verse number 16 through verse number 17 in the Passion Translation, and we'll get to where we're going tonight. Apostle Paul's writing the church at Rome, and he says, I refuse to be ashamed of sharing the wonderful message of God's liberating power unleashed in us through Christ. I love that. Unleashed. That the power of God is just let loose on the inside of us through the preaching of the gospel of Jesus Christ. It goes on and says, For I am thrilled to preach that everyone who believes is saved. The Jew first and then people everywhere. Now God is no player of favorites. You know what I mean? The Bible says that God is no respecter of persons. He's saying this is for everybody. But he says to the Jew first and then to the Gentile for a reason. Because the gospel started with the Jewish people at Jerusalem. And then from there, it spread out and it went everywhere. And the Jewish people heard it first because Jesus was a Jew, right? He came through their bloodline. That's why they were the people. They were the apple of God's eye because God knew that he was going to bring Messiah through their generations. And so that's why it says to the Jew first is because the gospel was preached first to Jews in Jerusalem and then to people everywhere. Some of your translations might say to the Jew first and then to the Greek or to the Gentile and that sort of a thing. Verse number 17. This gospel unveils a continual revelation. Everybody say continual revelation. If you're a fast typer online, go ahead and type that continual revelation into the comments section. This gospel unveils a continual revelation of God's righteousness. 
a perfect righteousness given to us when we believe. Now, that word righteousness is an old English word called right wiseness. It was the wisdom of God and the way of God. It's both a position in Christ and a practice with Christ. It's, it's where we stand with God. We are now righteous. We are made righteous. When we believe the gospel, we're taken out of the position of being a sinner and put into a position of being a saint. We're taken out of the position of being wrong and being sinful and being out of the will of God, being out of the covenants of God, and now we're taken into a position of being right with God. We have right standing with God, and we stand in the presence of God where we now can be, because it used to be that we could never stand in the presence of God because God cannot look upon sin. Therefore, now we've been given entrance. We've been given God's righteousness, the position, but also the practice, that it should get into our lives and infiltrate the way that we act, the way that we live, and the way that we do life. And so it says, in the last sentence, and it moves us from receiving life through faith to the power of living by faith. I need to read that because this is where we're going tonight, and this is really where this whole message came from is this statement right here. It moves us from receiving life through faith. When you got saved... When you said yes to Jesus, you received that by faith. You couldn't earn it. You couldn't work for it. You couldn't do anything to muster up salvation. There was no merit, no grading scale, no line, no curve that you had to be above. It was not like the biggest loser. As long as you're above the yellow line, you get to stay in the game, right? It's not like that. It had to be nothing of your own action, but a simple faith that Jesus went to the cross, that he died for my sin, and now if I will look to that cross and believe in his sacrifice, then I can be saved and I can live with him forever. It was a simple yielding of all of your heart and all of your life where you said yes to Jesus because of what he did. Now that you have laid down your life before him, you can receive his life. That happens through faith. It doesn't happen because you cleaned up your act. It doesn't happen because you climbed the highest mountain or crossed the deepest ocean. It happens because you simply believed the message of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Anybody listening tonight? But notice that this gospel message, this power of God and this righteousness moves us from receiving life through faith to the power of living by faith. In other words... Accepting Jesus as your Lord and your Savior was not the end. It was just the beginning. It was, it was the starting blocks. It was the gun that went off and made you run. It, it was the thing that began your life. It, it was the gates of life that opened up that you were born again. This is your beginning is the gospel, but the gospel is the starting point that moves us from receiving life through faith to now the power of living by faith. Can somebody say amen? That's good news because we need to know how to live life by faith because if the gun goes off and we're standing there going, I'm saved, I'm born again, It's not doing us or anybody else any good. You're motionless. And we've got a culture of consumerism that people are gimme, gimme, gimme. My name is Jimmy. I'll take all you can gimme, right? Gimme, gimme, gimme. I want, I want, I need, I need. And as long as we're pleased, as long as we're, you know, everything's copacetic, everything's good, we're okay. But see, life isn't fair. Have you noticed? Life isn't easy. It it was never designed to be. It it was never meant to be a bed of roses. And like the song is sung, every rose has its thorn. Come on, somebody. You know those 90 kids out there that are quoting that with me. This is what the scripture means when it says we are right with God through life-giving faith. And as we read on, we'll read and quote the scriptures that the just shall live by faith. There's no other way you can live than by faith. But this faith moves us from receiving life to the power of living life by faith. See, God never intended us to be starting block Christians that sit on the blocks. The frozen chosen standing there at the starting line. God wants finishers. God wants runners. God wants endurance people. God wants a persevering church and God wants an overcoming church. And therefore, God is pushing us into life. What if I, I 
took a teenager, and, you know, there might be some teenagers in the room tonight. I know we have our youth open tonight. And, well, but what if we had a teenager who couldn't drive, right? My daughter is getting ready to drive. And so pray for me, y'all. I need your deep intercession. But she's excited to drive. What if I took my daughter and I took her to the car and I said, okay, I need you to sit down and I want you to adjust the seat. Now, let me teach you about the seat. And I taught her everything there is to know about lumbar adjustment, support for your lower back and the headrest. And I taught her about the armrests and taught her about how she can scoot forward and scoot back and her feet can get on the pedals, that sort of thing. And then I said, okay, I've got something else that I need to teach you about this car. And I started teaching her about the, the technology, okay? Started teaching her about Bluetooth and the radio and the climate control and the air conditioning systems and taught her about the seat belt, taught her about the turn signals, that sort of a thing. You click up this way, click, you know, left and right, okay? And taught her about the, the windshield wash, taught her about the windshield wipers, taught her about the rear windshield wipers, taught her about the, the climate control and, and, and window defrost and rear window defrost and side mirror defrost they got. Now, what if I taught her all that stuff, but never taught her how to drive the car? Wouldn't you say that's probably the most important thing, is how to actually get from point A to point B safely? Gas is this pedal on the right, and brake is this pedal in the left, and you use this foot here, and you turn the car this way when you're going, and make sure to have fun. You know, those are the things that are important in life. And I believe that a lot of times when we take a look at, uh, you know, I don't want to criticize, or I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings, but many times it seems like we're preaching what's out there in the world rather than preaching the message of the gospel, which is how to live your life. Thank you for those couple of weak claps and a few hearty amens. Tonight, I want to talk to you about the power of living life by faith. I want to teach you how to drive tonight because this is the most important thing that we can do as a church. This is the most important thing that we can know as Christians because this gospel message is the power of God for salvation to all who believe, but it doesn't stop there. It starts there, and that's what God wants to get us into is the power of living by faith. First one is this, is progress, progress in life. God wants to move us down the lane. God wants to move us forward. I heard the story of a man who got a job, and he was uh, outstanding in, in his career. He was a painter, painted stripes on the roads, so went and got a job for, you know, the probably Caltrans or something like that, you know, and so they, they wanted him to paint the stripes on the road. And so the first day, he outpaced everybody. He did seven miles of stripes on the road. No one had ever done that. The, the record was like five, you know what I mean? And they're going, wow, this is day one. He does seven miles. He just broke everyone else's record. This is amazing. Seven miles of, of stripes on the road. So the next day, shows up to work and comes back, and they, they, they're all excited at the end of the day, and they say, hey, how, how, much, how much road did you do today? He says, oh, I, I didn't do as good as yesterday. I, I only did five miles. And he said, five miles, that's still everybody's old record. That, that's amazing, you know? The average is three, so you're doing awesome. You're outpacing everybody first two days on the job. Third day, he comes in, and they're, they're excited to see what he's going to do. Probably another five miles. Maybe he'll do eight miles. I don't know. You know, like, they're all excited. The end of the day, comes back. How much did you do? He said, I did about three miles. That's average. It's okay. I, I mean, we can't get down. Maybe he's tired. It's middle of the week. It's Wednesday, you know, and so we'll see how he does tomorrow on Thursday. Thursday comes in, goes out to work, and they're kind of going, okay, what, what's this guy going to do? He was so great. Had a good start, but, it's, you know, if you track it, every day he's going down. What's going on? And so he comes back at the end of the day, and he's just wiped out. He's exhausted, and they say, man, he probably really worked hard today. I bet you put in 10 miles. They say, hey, what did you do today? He said, I'm sorry, guys. All, all I got in was one mile. He said, one mile, Really? What happened? He goes, well, you know, I have to walk so far to get back to the paint bucket every time I go and dip the paint. For those of you that aren't laughing, just think about it. You'll get it a little while. But see, God wants us to progress. God wants us to move the bucket down the lane. God wants us to move in our life beyond the starting blocks. God wants to get us going where we need to go. Romans chapter 1 and verse number 17 in the New King James Version, probably more familiar to many of us in the New King James Version, it says, for in it, for in the gospel, the righteousness of God is revealed, look at this, from faith to faith. Everybody say faith to faith. Say it again, say faith to faith. Online, come on, type it twice, faith to faith. Maybe you want to just cut and paste, right? Faith to faith. What is he saying? He's saying that there is one kind of faith that starts you for salvation. That's the faith that simply believes that Jesus Christ went to the cross and died for your salvation, that you received that gift. And God says, from that faith, 
I want to move you from that faith to a faith that believes God to live for the rest of your life. There's different types of faith. There is a saving faith. That's where you start, where you believe God for your salvation. But there's also a sanctifying faith that keeps you holy and righteous before God and starts to clean up your act and starts to say, hey, that's how I used to live. That's not how I'm going to live any longer. There is a strengthening faith that gets you in the middle of a trial that says, you know what, we're going to go through this. God is good and he will take care of us. There is a serving faith that says, you know what, there's a need out there and we've got to take care of it. See, there's all kinds of faith that God wants to bring into our lives. God will take you from faith to faith. God wants to move the bucket down the road. Is anybody listening? And so it says, for in it, the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. Now, here's the question. Who are the just? The just is you. And the just is me, if we have believed for salvation by faith. Because there's no other way you're going to be justified before God except by faith. Because the just shall live by faith. So without believing God for your justification, and justification is just as if you'd never sinned. That means the gavel of of heaven has come down on your behalf, and you have been declared not Guilty by the shed blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. That is your justification. You think of justice, right? The justice of God had to be satisfied. And that could only be in the punishment for sin. We all were sinners headed for hell justly. And yet because Jesus took the cross that was meant for you and me and took the punishment for our sin, the wrath of God was poured out on him on the cross. Now God looks at our lives if we're in Christ. He sees the price paid and he says, It's just as if they'd never said, they are justified in my sight. And the gavels come down, they are not guilty. So much so that that was that old man doing that sin, right? That means that you are a new creature in Christ Jesus. You're not that old sinner anymore. You are now a saint of Almighty God. And your fingerprints, because you're new, are no longer the old fingerprints. That means you've been removed from the crime scene. The devil can't bring up your past and say, you dirty Filthy, rotten, lying, cheating, stealing, perverse. He can't bring any of that stuff up. Why? Because that's not you. That's the old man that died, and now you're living a new life in Christ Jesus. So those are the just who have believed God with saving faith. But these are the ones that started with saving faith, but now the Bible wants to push us into progress and takes us on to that next level of faith, serving faith, sustaining faith, strengthening faith, sanctifying faith, or if I can say it to you like this, life faith. God wants us to live our life by faith. God wants to push us down the road. Second thing is this, the power of living by faith. Number one is progress in life, but number two is this, is pleasing God. You know, there's a power that comes with the pleasure of God. I mean, I don't know if you guys have ever thought of this in terms like this, but, you know, the psalmist says, Lord, when you said to me, seek your face, I said right back, God, your face I will seek. There was a satisfaction in pleasing God. And when you have the pleasure of God, that means that you have God's approval. That means that you have God's presence. That means that you have God in the midst of what it is that you're doing. He's looking towards what it is that you're doing. He's smiling on it. There's no greater feeling than knowing the pleasure of God. There's been times where at this church where we've been in meetings, we've been grappling with decisions, and there's been no peace, and then all of a sudden something came forward. The wisdom of God came forward, and we knew that's what God wants, and I just felt as we made that decision, the pleasure of God on it. There have been times where we've said, hey, you know what, we're going to take care of this need. We're going to give this person, uh, you know, whether it be a resource or money or something like that. Or, you know what, we're going to be the bigger person. We're going to take it on the chin. We're going to swear to our own, home, own hurt. We're going to do what's right before God. And I can just feel the pleasure. Like, it just put a big smile on God's face. And when you have the pleasure of God, you can move forward in faith, knowing and believing that you are serving God well and that you have the pleasure of God in what it is that you're doing. I heard the story of a pianist who uh, couldn't hear in the upper octave range of the keys. He could hear in the lower range, but he couldn't hear in the upper range. 
And he was masterful. He was going for his doctorate's degree in music and in specifically uh, concert piano. And so he would play these pieces that were very skillful and that required him to use all 88 keys of the piano. And he couldn't hear any of the upper register as he was playing. It was all playing, listen to this, by faith. Why? Because he could not hear the things that were going on anytime his hand would move to the upper keys. He could only hear what was being played down here in the lower keys. And so he played by faith, believing that when he hit that key, that it made the right sound and that it complemented the rest of the piece that he was playing. See, I believe that in our lives, you're not always going to know what it is that you're doing. You're not always going to know what's going on. You're not always going to hear the results or see the things that are going to take place, but you are going to follow what is being written out in front of you. You will follow the score. You will follow the piece that God has placed in front of you. And as you play, you may not be hearing everything. You may not know everything that's going on as you're going, but by faith, you're going to faithfully do what it is that God has called you to do. And you may not be pleased by the piece, but guess who's listening in heaven who says, I am so pleased by the sound that is coming out of your life. See, we play for an audience of one. God is listening. God is watching. And God is smiling when we follow his will, his way by faith. Let me show this to you in the word Hebrews chapter 10. Turn there with me quickly in Hebrews chapter number 10. Some great verses. Hebrews chapter 10, verse number 38. We'll read this in the New King James Version once again. Everybody doing okay? You guys still good online? All right, I heard the people in the house say yes for you, so you must be good. Hebrews chapter 10, verse number 38. Towards the end, look at what it says. Now the just shall live how? Say it again. One more time. The just shall live by faith. But if anyone draws back, my soul has no pleasure in him. Ooh. That shows me that when we draw back, the, the literal translation of that is cower in fear. I, I don't want to displease God. So what pleases God? Faith pleases God. But if you're cowering in fear, what's going to happen? What are we going to do? What are we going to do? God's not pleased. God's not smiling. God smiles on faith. You you're there in Hebrews 10, Right? Just drop down a couple of verses. Hebrews chapter 11, verse number 6. If you can quote it, quote it with me. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. You know what puts a smile on God's face? Faith. When we believe God, when we don't cower in fear, when we don't listen to the worries, when we don't listen to the devil, when we don't listen to the world's systems and the things that are around us that are being swayed by the wicked one. No, when we listen to the word of God and believe God, and when we rise up in faith, that puts a smile on God's face. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's good. Last thing for us today is this. is not only progress in life, not only pleasing God, the power, the power that we have in living by faith is accomplishing his purpose. If we're going to live a life of faith, that life will end in accomplishing God's purposes. And just like we said, we may not always hear the keys that are being played. We may not know everything that's going on. But if we obediently follow the will and the way of God by faith and do what it is that God has called us to do, we will accomplish God's purpose. I want to read a scripture in the Old Testament, one of the minor prophets, Habakkuk. If you want to turn there with me, Habakkuk chapter number two. Again, very familiar verses, great verses for all of us. Habakkuk chapter number two may take you a couple seconds to find it as it is me because we don't play around in the minor prophets and there's so many of these guys, isn't there? And like you're looking for H and then you're like, oh wait, that's Hosea. That's not Habakkuk. Hold on. Where'd that guy go? What page is he on in your Bible? 910? Okay. That's helping me. Thank you. Habakkuk chapter 2. We're going to start in verse number 2 and go through the verse 
number four. I finally found it. It's on page number 646. You were totally wrong. All right. Habakkuk chapter 2, starting verse number 2. Look at what it says. The Lord answered me and said, write the vision and make it plain on tablets that he may run who reads it. Notice God says the vision is to be read, is to be easily understood so that people can move forward. God wants to move you down the road of life. And the vision needs to be clear. It needs to be understood. It goes on in verse number three. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it will speak and it will not lie. Though it tarries, wait for it because it will surely come. It will not tarry. Can I, can I just summarize this to you guys in, in, in a brief statement? There's a lot more to be said about this, but I believe that God is just saying, listen, even if you don't see it, continue. Even if it's hard, keep going. Even if it takes a while, it's going to happen, and it'll happen before you know it. Look at verse number four. Behold the proud. Look at the proud, in other words. Look at the person who is not humble and dependent on God. Behold the proud. His soul is not upright in him. Can I, can I put it to you in another term? He's unjust. He's not right. His soul is not upright. If it's not upright, it's bent. It's crooked. It's lower. It's down, Right? So he says, behold the proud, his soul is not upright him, but the just shall live by what? Say it again loud. Type it loud. All caps, come on online. Give me faith in the, in the comment section right now. The just shall live by faith. Notice that comes right after the vision that God has. Comes right after, hey, keep going, keep running, keep waiting, be patient, move forward with what the vision is, that he who reads it may run, the just shall live by faith. See, the things that are evident in God's word should also be evident in our lives. The things that are evident in God's word, write the vision and make it plain. You have more vision in this book than you can ever accomplish in a lifetime. There is more for us to get going with. And there are things that are conspicuous, if I could say it to you like that, in the Word of God. The love of God, justice, mercy, faith, the gospel, repentance. All these things that are all throughout the Word of God. That God says, I want you to take this vision for your life. Because it is plain. It is right there in front of you. And you have the power of the Holy Spirit to do it. And you can do it by faith. Those things that are evident in God's Word should be evident in our lives. Hebrews, if you want to turn back to chapter number 11 with me, we'll close with this tonight. Hebrews chapter number 11. I want to read to you verse number 33 down through verse number 38. I'm going to read it to you in the New Living Translation, a more modern translation, and I just like the way that it said this. I want to just draw out to you, because the book of Hebrews in chapter number 11 outlines what many would call the hall of faith. It's men and women who throughout history, and especially the biblical history, simply believed God and amazing things took place and their lives are speaking to us today. In Hebrews chapter 11, starting verse number 33, reading down through verse number 38 in the New Living Translation says this. It says, by faith, everybody say by faith. Once again, by faith. These people overthrew kingdoms, ruled with justice, and received what God had promised them. Do you know that you can obtain promises through faith? You can believe God at his word and you can receive those promises by faith. I know plenty of people who have gotten healed because they got a scripture. I know plenty of people who have had provisions because they got a hold of the word of God that talked about provision for their lives. I know many people who were aimless and who weren't really doing too much got a hold of a scripture and it changed their course of their life and they were able to accomplish great things for God. It goes on and says, they shut the mouths of lions, quenched the flames of fire, and escaped death. By the edge of the sword. Look at this. Their weakness was turned to strength. Anybody say, I just feel like I can't do it. I, I just feel weak. Any, any weak people in the place? Uh, every hand should be up because, come on, Christians, we need to be humble and dependent on God. This is all of us, right? We, we need to, to realize that we can't do this in our own strength. It has to be a life of faith. Their weakness was turned to strength. They became strong in battle and put whole armies to flight. You know, I identify with Gideon shaking in his boots in the middle of a, a wine press trying to tread the grain in there. That doesn't work, but he was scared. I identify with, with the, the soldiers at times that were shaking in their boots looking at Goliath, and here comes David, a young man. But it was by faith 
that he turned that whole thing around because he believed in the covenant promises of God with Israel. He believed in a greater God than what he saw in the natural. I identify with these men and women who, by faith, simply did these things. But then the scripture goes on. Verse number 35, women received their loved ones back again from death, but others were tortured. Now, we don't often take a look at these verses. These aren't very popular verses because nobody's saying, I'm believing God to get tortured, right? I don't know anybody. I'm not even going to ask for a hand to go up. Anybody believe in God to get tortured tonight? You know, as you go home, you want to be tortured? No one, right? We don't even have to ask that question. But others endured that. How? How did they endure something so horrible? How did they endure something so terrible? By faith. Others were tortured, refusing to turn from God in order to be set free. In other words, the offer was on the table. If you will just renounce God, you can go free. Just say it. Just say it. And they refused. By faith. They placed their hope in a better life after the resurrection. Verse 36, some were jeered at. And their backs were cut open with whips. Others were chained in prisons. You know, we're so afraid of people not approving of us. We're afraid of not getting enough likes online. We're afraid of if, if we do something following the will of God that someone's going to see and someone's going to say something. Guys, by faith, you can endure anything on this planet. Verse 37, some died by stoning. Some were sawn in half. Others were killed with the sword. Some went about wearing skins of sheep and goats, destitute and oppressed and mistreated. By faith, they went through those things. Is there going to be mistreatment of people on the planet? Absolutely. We live in a fallen world. Things are not right out there, guys. We're not burying our head in the sand saying, oh, everything's hunky-dory. It's all good. No, it's not all good. There's a sinful population out there. There's a devil that's alive and well running rampant on the earth. We live in a fallen system, a fallen society. This is the life that we live. How can we go through this when it's so bad? By faith. Verse 38, they were too good for this world. Oh, I love that. Don't you just love that? The one translation says, the world was not worthy of them. Oh, come on now. The world wasn't even worthy of them. They, they were living on a higher plane that, that the world wasn't even worthy of them. They were too good for this world, wandering over deserts and mountains, hiding in caves and holes in the ground. Now, again, not popular verses. Nobody wants to live that life. But guys, if it gets worse before it gets better, you're going to need faith in your life. You're not going to need patty cake. You're not going to need a love boat captain. You're going to need a drill sergeant to get in your face and say, get back in faith. This may be bad, but guess what? You got this, honey child. You can do it. You can go through it. You can do all things through Christ who gives you strength. You have the victory in Christ Jesus. All things are possible to him who believes. And with God, nothing shall be impossible. That's the life we live. It's a life of faith. Guys, we got to get this in our hearts. we got to get this in our system because this gospel doesn't just save our soul. This gospel moves us down the road. It moves us into life. And truly, it's not what you go through, but it's how you go through it. And the only way you're going to go through it is by faith. We believe God at his word and we faithfully follow his will his way. Can we pray together tonight? Come on, let's pray. Father, we're so grateful for your word. We thank you, Lord, for that which you've imparted to each and every one of us. And Lord, tonight we receive your word with meekness, which is able to save our soul, which is able to move us down the road. We're grateful, God, tonight. Lord, tonight we choose a life of faith. Maybe you're in this place and you're a Christian, you're a believer, you're full of faith, but can we just do something that, that's just a, a symbol of our belief and our agreement. Would you, if you just want to just maybe uh, renew the covenant, if you will, just rehearse the covenant that, hey, I'm a believer, I'm here, but I want to live a life of faith. Would you just lift up a hand to God right now? Would you just lift up a hand that I'm going to live a life of faith? We're going to believe God in this place. Father, you see every heart, God, beyond the hand. Lord, you know where we're at. And so, Father God, we renew, we recommit today, God, we devote ourselves to living a life of faith. Come on, if you're at home, your hand's not up, but you know you're a believer and you know you want to just, by faith, put that hand up. Go ahead right now. Come on, join in with us. 
Father, we thank you, those near and far, God. We are a people of faith. We're going to believe you at your word, God. Father, we want to be pleasing to your heart and put a smile on your face. We want to move down the road and see your will and your way accomplished in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. You can put your hands down. Let me just uh, talk to you guys for a moment. No one get up, no one leave during this time online. Come on, don't log off yet. God wants to speak to you right where you're at. You know, we made this commitment, we made this statement, and maybe you raised your hand even. Maybe you've been in church all your life, and you said, I'm a person of faith, I believe, I understand, I know God. I've been raised in church, parents told me you were a Christian growing up. Maybe they hung a cross or a St. Christopher on your neck, had you baptized or christened as a child. You've always been around church, like the things of God. Maybe you can quote scriptures, sang the songs at Christmas, celebrated Easter every year of your life. But you heard the simple gospel message tonight. That there is nothing you can do in the natural to earn your way to heaven. Nowhere in the scriptures does it say that your good deeds, your church attends, being raised in church, being raised in the right home, wearing the right jewelry, doing the right religious rituals, growing up as a child. None of that's going to get you into heaven. You will not go to heaven based on your scripture memorization, celebrating holidays, none of those things. Pastor, I got involved in church. I helped out, sang in the choir, carried the pastor Bible, made decisions. People thought of me as a leader. Doesn't that mean that I'm a Christian? I'm in church right now. Here I'm in church. I made the choice to sit in church service tonight. Made the choice to log in online. That's great. I'm glad you did those things. But can I tell you something? That's not going to get you into heaven. Nor in the Bible say sit in a church service or log on to a website. And that'll get you into heaven. That's like me saying I want to be a car, and so I log on to Acura. I think that that's going to make me a car. Or go to my garage in my house and sit in the garage and say, I'm a car, I'm a car, I'm a car. Beep, beep, vroom, vroom. I am a car. I will never be a car. The same way, you can't just sit in church or log on to a church service online and say, I'm a Christian, I'm a Christian, I'm a Christian. Amen. Hallelujah. And that makes you a Christian. Tonight, I want you to ask yourself this question. What makes you think you're right with God going to heaven? Is it because of your good works? Is it because of your scripture memorization? Is it because of your church attendance, your upbringing? Because if it is, let me love you enough to tell you the truth. You're not going to make it to heaven. No man will be justified in the presence of God by their own works, by their own goodness, by their own deeds. It only happens when you do it God's way. Like we said, it's a life of faith, believing that Jesus Christ went to the cross on your behalf, paid the price for your sins, but not just knowing that. I'm not just talking about mental assent, just having this up here in your head, but that you respond in faith by surrendering to God all of your heart and all of your life. And the Bible says, he who believes in his heart and confesses with his mouth that Jesus is Lord shall be saved. And so in a moment, I want to lead those of you who need to give God all of your heart and give God all of your life, who want to be born again and headed for heaven, denying your presence in hell. I want to lead you in a simple prayer to invite Jesus in your heart. You can be born again right there in your seat, right where there, where you're at, at home, online, wherever you're at, across the nation, around the world. I want to lead you in that prayer, but I want to know who I'm praying with. And so in a moment, I'm going to count to three just like this. One, two, three. And when I say three, I'm going to pop my hand on this microphone just like this. Bang. When you hear the sound of my hand pop on this microphone just like that. Bang. I want you to simply raise your hand. What you're doing by the raising of your hand is you're saying, I want to give God all my heart. I want to give God all my life. I want to be born again, headed for heaven, denying my presence in hell. I'll see your hand go up. I'll count it. And then you can put it right back down. You say, Pastor, if I raise my hand, I'll be embarrassed. I'm around people that know me and they think that I'm a Christian. I'll be embarrassed, Pastor. Jesus said this. He said, if you confess me before man, I'll confess you before my Father who's in heaven. But if you deny me, he says, I will deny you. Tonight, your call. Tonight, your choice. You can sit there and do nothing. You made a choice. You told God where you're at. Or how about this? Surrender all of your heart and all of your life to Jesus Christ. Not just believing him with your head, but doing something with your heart. Responding to God in faith. Tonight is your night of salvation. Who should raise their hand in a moment? If you've been running from God instead to God, I'm speaking to you. Who should raise their hand if you're not sure about your salvation? Tonight, make sure. Who should raise their hand if you never said yes to Jesus, giving them all of your heart and all of your life? I'm speaking to you. Or finally, who should raise their hand? If you're lukewarm, half-hearted, maybe you've been a little in, a little out, a little up, a little down, a little token prayer every now and again, occasional church attendance. God is something in your life, but he's not everything. You're not opposed to God, but you're not wholehearted for God. You're a compromised Christian. Burning the candle at both ends. Listen, it's not going to be long before you burn up. You cannot ride the fence of the world and the church 
and think that you're going to get to make it. Jesus said, if I find you lukewarm, I will vomit you from my mouth. You're going to have to make a choice. Tonight, choose life. Tonight, choose to give God all of your heart. Choose to give God all of your life. I want to lead you in that prayer tonight, but I want to know who I'm praying with. Online, if you're watching, you want to uh, click the button. If you're watching on our rockchurch.com live stream, there's a button that says raise hand. You can click that right now, and now we'll put a number up that you raised your hand there. Maybe if you're watching on one of the other platforms, you can put a little hand emoji or asterisk and it says raise his hand. You can do that, or just simply raise your hand right where you're at. God sees you, and God's watching. I'm going to count to three. Pop my hands on the microphone. This is your time. This is your moment of salvation. Here we go. Get ready to get your hands up if you need to. One, two, three. Let me see your hands. Just raise them up high for me right now. Thank you. There's one. God bless you. Who else tonight? Here in the house, I'm looking live. Who else tonight? There's two. God bless you. Three. Yes. Four. Gotcha. God bless you. Anybody else real quick? Just want to make sure. Is there another one over here? Four. Gotcha. Five. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you for the help, ushers. Appreciate you guys. Anybody else real quick? So to make sure online, hey, if you haven't already raised your hand, click that button, put those emojis. Do that now. Come on, let's go for God. By faith, I can see people in their living room just raising a hand. By faith, I can see you in your car on break at work, raising your hand there in your car. How awesome. How awesome. Good for you. Good for you. Anybody else? Oh, yeah, I see a hand up there. God bless you. About six or seven wise people. Anybody else real quick? All right, like I said, I want to lead you in that prayer. So even if you didn't raise your hand, but you know you need to pray with us, Come on, put your heart on the Lord right now. Let's all bow our heads. Let's close our eyes. Everybody's going to join in together just to encourage those of you, even online. Come on, get ready to say this out loud together with us. Everybody put your heart on the Lord and say these words out loud if you have the ability. Say, Father God, I come to you tonight in Jesus' name to give you all of my heart and all of my life. Please come into my heart. Be my Lord and my Savior. Forgive me my sin. Cleanse me my past. And give me a future with you, Lord. For I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. That he came, that he died, and he's raised again to life just for me. Thank you, Jesus. Let it be known that from this day on, I am saved. I'm a Christian. I'm born again, headed for heaven, denying my presence in hell. I commit to live a life of faith in you. Fill me now with your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Can we just give the Lord a great big praise? Come on online. Praise the Lord. Put those hand clap, those hands raised emojis. Come on. So good. So good. Now, for those of you that are watching online, if you prayed that prayer from your heart, we want to follow up with you so you will notice in the comments section some links. You can follow those links and get a hold of some free information. We'll send you a PDF or even a paper copy of some materials that will encourage you in your walk with God as well. If you want to connect with someone here live at the church, you can do that. Send us email at rockchurch.com and talk to you about I just gave my heart to the Lord or follow those links and you can put in the comments the the fact that you want to follow up, you want to connect with someone here live. We do have people that will be out in the foyer. There's tables on both sides. And I'll have some materials on those tables for you to pick up. And you can get a hold of the uh, a booklet called Welcome to Your Destiny, Easy Steps to a Successful Future with God. So you'll see them there masked up. They'll be ready waving at you guys. And you can connect with them and uh, talk to them about coming back and getting connected with them and they'll help to encourage you in your new walk of faith with God. We love you guys so much. We're so blessed. Can we all stand to our feet tonight? Did you guys get something from the word? Come on, we're going to live a life of faith. Amen. It's going to be good. And this weekend, Daniel chapter 6, verse number 10. We're going to open the doors as is our custom from the early days. God is going to love you guys so much. Lift your hands. I'm going to bless you as we go. Father, I bless the saints of God from the top of their heads to the soles of their feet. They are blessed in the city, blessed in the field, blessed coming, blessed going. May everything they put their hands to, they shall prosper. Lord, we're going to declare about our inland empire. And if you're online from somewhere else, shout out your area when we shout this out. We declare out loud and in faith that the inland empire shall be saved. It was a blessing hearing the word of God with you today.